until someone, or better yet, some group, unifies them through writing by linking their claim, strategies, and goals. This was the function of B. Ruby Rich's seminal 1992 article, New Queer Cinema. While the movies came first, the article theorized their style, function, and context. Rich explains how many of these films from the early 1990s share a postmodern vocabulary, both aesthetic and political, while also making sure to note the critical differences between the media practices of the girls and boys. Then, Andrea Weiss builds upon Rich's taxonomy in her article, Transgressive Cinema, Lesbian Independent Film, to note that lesbian cinema can be defined by its, quote, attempts to construct alternative visual codes, unquote, deriving from, quote, lesbian self-definition, unquote, and the, quote, 1970s lesbian feminist movement, unquote. Note how form and politics are linked to and through theory in both these written works. Somehow, the corporate architecture of YouTube, while absolutely expanding connection, participation, and communication, limits the energizing and sometimes radicalizing function of theory's place within and alongside a film movement. Thus, YouTube, like the internet more generally, according to Wendy Chun in her book, Control and Freedom, Power and Paranoia in the Age of Fiber Optics, works to, quote, free the flow of information, reinvigorating free speech, unquote. But this occurs in an, 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 in an anarchic and privately motivated environment that disallows the unification of these oddly assorted demands, images, styles, or viewers. The architecture of YouTube, which builds upon the flexible, non-centralized, and non-hierarchical structure of the internet, disallows the priorities, categories, and principled connections which produce both theory and politics. Alexander Galloway, in his book Protocol, explains that the end result is fragmentation. And while this may be continually exciting to postmodern cowboys, endlessly anticipating the demise of the self, it has never served well people who are political, people who need to stand strong together in the name of something that must not be in the here and now. Here, the politics of AIDS is key to understanding what new queer cinema was and queer video on YouTube is not. Monica Pearl suggests that new queer cinema is AIDS cinema. Because a great many of these films and videos were created in the name of or in response to this particular and devastating crisis that needed response immediately. While all the films and videos were certainly not about AIDS, they shared what Julianne Piddick calls an ethical ground. I understand this to mean something quite simple and definitive for media praxis. They were fighting for something, and in the name of that goal, particular and linked media forms, practices, and strategies were developed in dialogue with other work and producers. Michelle Aaron, in her introduction to New Queer Cinema, A Critical Reader, describes a mutual style and politics organized around defiance of what it meant to be gay, the sanctity of the past, cinematic conventions, and the meaning of death, precisely because of the place of AIDS. Because YouTube cannot generate an ethics, a shared sensibility and belief system between its, vid between its video or its viewers, it also forecloses the possibility for media politics. Furthermore, as these few examples from the critical writing connected to new queer cinema demonstrate, when people theorize a political cinema while and after it is being made, there will be an important conversation about the imperatives and commonalities of form, as well as content. Since there is no formal unity and consistency across the works found on YouTube, this theoretical pre prerequisite is also belied. Without such theoretical bedrock, that is, theory about form, queer realist practice on YouTube cannot take what is the most common second step for political fil film movements, namely, as representation increases, those studying a movement quickly realize that expanded visibility is only the most preliminary of radical ambitions. Rather, Anat Pick explains in her article, New Queer Cinema and Lesbian Films, that, quote, screening lesbianism is not simply a matter of making the invisible visible, but of negotiating different regimes of visibility, unquote. Thus, using cinema to herald, quote, new ways of thinking, being, and screening lesbian and queer, unquote. New ways of seeing, like the delivery platform that is YouTube, 
are only the first move in a more radical and multifaceted project which commits to innovative thinking and novel ways of being. It is this also which falls out of YouTube, not because radical queer thinking and being, epistemology and ontology, are not modeled in the content and even form of some of the videos on display, but because it is not coherently and consistently patterned. Given YouTube's aimless structure, there's no way to build. For instance, the term lesbian community delivers to me first a news clip about Prince William of England splitting up with his girlfriend, then a short clip featuring the popular but ubiquitous dykes on bikes from an unnamed gay pride parade, something from a rosy fan club, a clip from the seminal do lesbian documentary Forbidden Love, a few clips of lectures and shows at various gay and lesbian community centers, these, however, primarily featuring gay men, while the vast majority of clips turned out to be titillating glimpses of gay male sex, including videos called Bears and Leather Guys, Hot Speedo Guys, Gay Leather Guys, and Gay Guardian Angel. And remember, this is from the term lesbian community. Of course, YouTube's edifice, which reduces media production and consumption to the discrete and unlinked output, output or viewing practices of random queer individuals, or perhaps more precisely, producers who claim the word queer as a key term for any number of unknown reasons, many of which actually seem to be somewhat nefarious, also functions to disallow the establishment of community, which was perhaps the foremost goal of new queer cinema. The media makers creating the content, even as they are also then selecting their search words, are each doing so in isolation and with no plan larger than their private production. I hope that I've begun to mark the places where YouTube misses out. Namely, as YouTube explodes numbers, it lacks other things. A theory or theories, a politics, a sense of history, and a community. What YouTube gains in access, it lacks in education. What YouTube has in open admission, it lacks in focused vision. People are making unprecedented volumes of video with little but dominant media as their guide. When I look for a queer media praxis on YouTube, the tradition that undergirds contemporary queer realist images can be found, as well as incredible resources I would have never had access to without it. Short videos by undistributed queer artists, scenes from lectures, parades, protests, and bedrooms. However, these images, although exceedingly diverse, are undifferentiated and poorly categorized. They stand in sorry isolation from the time place, community, aims, context, and theories from whence they were produced, each vying and linking with other undifferentiated videos in a sea of queer images that is removed from the specificity and motivating clarity of causes and communities. Now certainly each of these videos, recontextualized on a queer page, or even more specifically an AIDS page, or a page on lesbian sexuality, would function more in the vein of praxis. But this is not the language of YouTube which is one of fragments, clutter, noise, and mob rule. Has YouTube allowed for any new forms of queer realist video? It has certainly opened up access, but at the cost of denying what politicized media theorists have always coupled with democratic media. Theory, politics, community, ethics, and stated radical goals that start in media, but end in the world. 